In this section, let's understand about a VPC, that is a virtual private cloud in detail. As a part of that, in this video, let's understand about uh, the overview of, of a VPC. All right, fine. So before getting into VPC, uh, let's have a look about uh, the Google's physical network. Okay, as on today, this is how uh, the Google's physical network is built up. Okay, they have their data centers across the globe and uh, this is how they have interconnected it. Um, so as I said, this is as on today uh, when I'm recording and when you are seeing maybe the data centers may be getting extended because they, they are gradually extending their network, right? Fine. So this is how they have interconnected all their data centers across the globe and providing a vast and robust network to, to deliver the, uh, the Google Cloud service. All right. Fine. The reason why we are uh, taking a look about uh, their physical network is um, VPC is built on top of this physical network only. Okay. So though uh, VPC is referred as a virtual private uh, cloud that is built on top of this physical network that that is connected across the globe. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get into the overview of VPC. As you know, the term VPC stands for a uh, virtual private cloud. Okay, virtual private cloud. That's the reason we uh, refer it as VPC. And uh, VPC is a virtual network that is formed on top of uh, Google's physical production network. As I have uh, told in the previous slide, uh, the VPC is built on top of the virtual, sorry, the physical network only. Or in the other words, uh, we can say that the VPC network is a virtual version of a physical network that usually contains the routers, switches, firewalls and other network components. Um, just to correlate uh, to understand, okay, uh, for an example, when we create any uh, VM instance or the compute engine, okay, which we refer as a compute engine, right, the, the virtual machine in the GCP, um, though we are creating it uh, with a software, actually it is operating in some hardware resources within the data center, right? Like the same, uh, though VPC networks are created virtually through a software, the GCP dashboard or platform, but it actually rely on the underlying physical network, which is connected across the globe. So the VPC is a global resource and uh, it's not limited to any single region or zone as uh, same the subnet is a, a regional resource and each subnet defines a range of ip addresses and we would be uh, you know discussing about this in detail in the upcoming uh, videos this is on a very high level fine uh, when you create a new project a default virtual private cloud is automatically set up all the computing resources of that project will be part of this default vpc uh, it, it makes it too easy for the resources to communicate with each other. Okay. Uh, so basically, whenever uh, you create any project within uh, the VPC, a default VPC will be created. Means you don't need to create it uh, manually. Uh, as soon as you create the project within the Google Cloud Platform, uh, the VPC is automatically created. The default VPC is automatically created. And whatever resources that you are adding to the project, right? By default, it is getting added under that virtual private cloud. Okay, fine. So your project has a flexibility to possess a multiple VPCs. Uh, by default, the system generates a single VPC automatically. And if needed, additionally, VPC can be manually created to meet the specific requirement of single project. Uh, And uh, there is a limitation. It's like, so when I say limitation, um, as I said, whenever you create one project, by default, one VPC will be created. There is a quota. It's like per project, you can create up to five networks. Okay. Uh, per project, you can create up to five networks. But if in case, as per your requirement, if you want to increase the number of uh, networks, maybe you can request for, to request GCP to add more network. All right. But by default, a project would be having a quota of adding up to five maximum network. All right. And there are two types of IP addresses. 
uh this is very common to uh you know the networking terms as like which we refer as a public ip address and the private ip address right so this is as same as that so the external ip address is referred as the public ip address here and the internal ip address is as same as the private ip address which we commonly refer in the network terms so if you see even here the external as per the uh, you know um a uh, statement right the external ip address is used to, to connect to the services in gcp using the internet connectivity so basically this is what the public ip address is right so whichever services or application uh, is an internet facing we would be having that application or service would be having a public ip address and uh, any user using that public ip address through the internet can connect to the application or the service right so um the same public ip is referred here in in terms of a google or gcp platform it is referred as a external ip and uh, in terms of uh, the internal ip it is used to connect within the vms or other services within gcp only when we are connected in the google cloud's own internal network right so we can easily correlate it right we can easily correlate this uh, term with the private ip because basically private ip using a private ip we can um, communicate only within the network right so as uh, same here all right so these are the two different types of ip addresses in gcp platform nothing but the public and the private ip only the changes in the terminologies all right so let's understand about vpc uh, you know on a very high level let's understand uh, let's let's con consider a scenarios like just consider that this is the google cloud platform okay so this is the google cloud platform and uh, as i said whenever you are adding a new project right just consider that this is a google cloud platform and you are creating a new project within the google cloud platform and whenever you create a new project within the google cloud platform automatically by default a vpc network could be created so this is referred as the default vpc okay fine and whatever resources whatever resources that you are adding under this project okay whatever resources that you are adding under this project will be by default will be part of this network okay so that's what we have discussed in the uh, you know uh, previous slides right so we have told that um, whenever we create a new project by default a uh, default vpc will be created and whatever resources that we are creating under that project will be mapped under that default vpc right so let's let's consider a situation or let's consider an example like you want to uh, create um, you know some four uh, instances like uh, maybe four vm instances a uh, compute engines from different geographical location okay uh, maybe uh, if we see here we have a three right L let's go with the same so if you see here uh, i have created a two vm right the the two compute engines in under uh, us west one region okay this is a uh, us west one region and i have one vm instance that's a compute engine that's created in the other region that's us east one okay so this is us west and this is us east though they are geographically in different location okay physically or geographically in two different location but still they are part of same vpc network okay so as they are part of a same vpc network they can easily communicate from this uh, you know resource to this resource or to this resource to here to this resource okay so this is the beauty of uh, the vpc though uh, your instances or the resources are part of a different region okay if it is part of a same vpc you can able to communicate okay so how it is communicating if you remember in the very first slide we were uh, discussing about uh, discussing about the physical network of google cloud right how they have connected their data centers across the globe so as i said earlier this vpc is running on top of that physical network so that though this uh, two compute engines or uh, this two uh, vm resources are in one uh, physical region uh, one region and this is in the different geographical region we are still able to communicate through the google cloud network all right still they they can able to connect to with each other because they are part of same vpc a same network i would say 
and also you can make in such a way as like if you want to uh, you know expose one of your vm uh, that's running some application you, if you want to uh, you know expose this application um, as an internet facing and if you want to keep this two as an internal usage you can make use of it okay uh, though they are part of a same vpc you can just give an internet access to this and you can have uh, this uh, vms only for an internal access all right so this is a very high level understanding we'll be discussing more in detail uh, in the upcoming videos of this section as a recall very simple uh, vpc is a virtual network that is built on top of the the google clouds physical network point number 1 then whenever we create any project within a google cloud platform by default one vpc will be created uh, the vpc network could be created and whatever resources that you are creating for that project by default it would get part of it will be comes under the part of the same default network so that irrespective of geogra different geographic location they can communicate with each other all right and one more important thing uh, by default uh, as per the quota a uh, per project we can get up to five networks we can create up to five networks uh, but if you want to create a more networks as per your project requirement you can request uh, google cloud and you can get it done all right fine 